A quick disclaimer, I am being paid to make this video by the European Union and NS Cozaire as part of a series meant to share several wonderful geologic features within the nation of Slovakia. If you were to go back 10 million years, where do you think the most active volcanoes on the planet would be located? Ethiopia or maybe Chile? Well, both of these answers are correct, there was another volcanic chain which was surprisingly active. This chain, known as the Slonske Hills, was not located in an unfamiliar part of the world, but rather eastern Slovakia. Here, a chain of 13 volcanoes stretches across a 55 km long and 15 km wide stretch of ground. This chain created abundant mineralization, resulting in the formation of precious opal, lead and zinc ore, and even the antimony ore mineral known as stibnite, which produces magnificent needle-like black crystals. The volcanic generated hilly landscape caused increased precipitation of all on the mountainous regions, so you can easily see the outline of the more than a dozen volcanic vents due to their thick tree cover. Yet, one mountain in particular, which is known as Strachovi, stands apart, as it was once this chain's most voluminous volcano. Today, if you climb on its highly eroded edifice, you can find numerous moss-covered gray boulders. These represent the remnants of viscous andesite lava flows that once advanced down its slopes at speeds of less than 1.5 km per hour. Just imagine this very location as not a dense forest, but rather a toxic environment with harmful levels of carbon dioxide, burning grasses, an advancing 15 meter high lava flow, and a thick gray column of ash rising into the atmosphere a few kilometers away. As you walk around the remnants of this ancient volcano, you might also see other more colorful rock types such as red rhyolite, which create large rounded features known as lava domes. There are also thick pillars of assorted volcanic rocks which were created by millions of years of erosion to form large pillars. These pillars, which contain both sand and fist-sized particles, represent the deposit from Strachlovi's most deadly hazard, pyroclastic flows. Pyroclastic flows are superheated currents of primarily gas but also lava fragments and superheated ash which are hotter than 500 degrees Celsius and often move at speeds exceeding 100 kilometers per hour. Notice how this deposit is approximately 10 meters thick, consisting of two pyroclastic flow tuff layers, each of which is about 5 meters thick, and a single thinner ashfall tuff layer between the two. Based on the thickness of this material, it can be estimated that Strechlovi once produced two VEI-4 explosive eruptions and a single VEI-3 eruption. For comparison, here is what the aftermath of a similar volume VEI-4 explosive eruption of Okmok in Alaska looked like. If we were to compare Strachovi to a modern active European volcano, it would be closest to Italy's destructive Mount Vesuvius. Strachovi once rose to a height of 1800 meters above sea level and during its 100,000 year long lifespan produced hundreds of explosive volcanian eruptions. Initially, Strachovi emitted blocky andesite lava flows which were accompanied by intermittent vent clearing explosions. However, over time its eruptions became increasingly explosive, with the amount of ejected ash soon overtaking the amount of lava emitted. Powerful subplenian and plenian eruptions eventually occurred, where thick layers of pyroclastic flow deposits were emplaced, only to be followed by large-scale lahars, where heavy rainfall caused significant amounts of newly erupted ash to be swept into river channels. So, why does this volcano exist in the first place? The answer is that before the Miocene period began, a tectonic plate collision was ongoing where the North European platform was being subducted underneath the central Carpathian block. However, during the Miocene, this subduction ceased, but soon the dangling motionless subducting slab became increasingly unstable. Eventually, this dangling slab snapped off and sunk into the lower mantle. As a result, molten rock and the mantle rushed upwards to fill the empty space the slab previously occupied, some of which then intruded into the crust and formed the chain of volcanoes known as the Slonske Hills. As a final note, the Slonske Hills do not only involve 11 stratovolcanoes but also two cinder cones, with these cinder cones having each only erupted once. The northern of these cones is known as Kosicki-Klekanov and its outline can still be distinguished today.